Welcome to the Proceedings Podcast. I'm Bill Hamlet, the Editor-in-Chief of Proceedings at the Naval Institute, and West 2023 has just completed. I'm with Mallory Shelbourne, my, my uh, counterpart from USNI News, and uh, we just came out of watching the uh, CNO's keynote, keynote speech at the luncheon. And uh, Mallory, key takeaways for you from, from what CNO just said. Yeah, I think the CNO, you know, he, this is his last budget cycle because he'll be he'll be retiring uh, this summer. So, you know, I think he's really driving home his readiness uh, mission because he's he's made it a point to say that readiness comes first for the Navy. He's not going to build a bigger Navy than he can sustain, and I think he's he's really emphasized that. Um, and that's it seems to be that's how he's prioritized his last budget cycle. Um, I think we also, you know, we heard some stuff about some of the new platforms how they're working on. You know, future programs like DGS, SSNX, um, and I know you know he talked a lot about unmanned and how they're prioritizing unmanned platforms getting um, unmanned out to the fleet. I don't know that uh, that CNO mentioned uh, Columbia class in his. I don't know that I, he did. I know Secnav talked about the it Secnav a lot this did. morning, right? He mentioned it, but uh, it was interesting to hear CNO talk and not mention Columbia class. Yes. Not, not that that means it's not a priority, but uh, that was that was interesting to me. He did talk a lot about readiness, and he talked about you know the constant sort of battle between you know readiness today mm -hmm. and then also modernizing the force for the future yes. and the, the tension that naturally exists there. Um, I don't know. You were you spent uh, before West. You spent a night or two on board USS Halsey, yes, a I DDG did. here in San Diego. Yes. Uh, your first time underway on a DDG? Yes, it was my first time I underway on a DDG. I toured a Spru and Spear side once, but it was my first time out out to sea. What was your impression? It, it was a great experience. Um, the crew was really great. The CO fantastic. Um, you know, they really let me uh, have some really good experiences. I sat in on some boards for some surface warfare officers who were oh, getting cool. uh, qualified for officer of the deck, which was really um, a great experience to see, um, you know, what kind of questions and scenarios they have to think through when they're up on the bridge. Um, I had never seen anything like that before. So that, as a reporter, that really helped me get an insight into what their um, day to day is like. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was just good to get out to see. It's always great to get out to see and uh, see how see how a DDG functions because it's so different than you know the carriers and the big deck amphibs, which I've spent. You know, I, I heard a lot in this, not just from CNO, but across the last you know two and a half days here at West, a lot of discussion about logistics, about maintenance, about uh, keeping what we have. Uh, up and running. Uh, Secretary Del Toro this morning used the example of the USS Germantown. Mm -hmm. It's 37 years old. Yes. And he said that he toured that ship just yesterday or earlier this week, uh, and he gave you know kudos to the crew of that ship mm -hmm. for keeping you know a 37-year-old warship operational, mission capable. But he did say, hey, at the end of the day, a, a warship's like having an old car. Right. You know, the, the longer you have it, the more expensive the maintenance becomes, the more expensive that, you know, the tail becomes. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it's time to, you know, cut your losses. Cut your losses. Exactly. What, what are some other, um, you know, takeaways for, for you, for West overall, not just what you heard today? Well, I think what to your point about, um, you know, modernize, divesting of older systems to modernize, we heard a lot about that. The Navy has been talking about that for several years now. I think that. Um, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, I think we're going to see in the budget next month, mu excuse me, next month, which comes out on March 9th, I think we're going to see that play out again. Um, it sounds like, you know, the Marine Corps is, uh, they want their 31 amphibious ships, but, you know, the Navy is weary of maintaining older big amphibs, like you talked about, like the, like the SECNAV mentioned, and I think, you know, we might see that again where they try to decom some of those ships. That's always a possibility. So I think on March 9th we'll get a better sense of that. So I think that's one of the takeaways. I'd say the other one is, um, you know, this a lot of technology unmanned. There was a lot of talk of unmanned both on the on the USV front mostly. We heard a lot about Task Force 59. Yep. Um, that seems to be um, getting a lot of, it's, it's a lot of discussion in the Navy as, a, as around that task force. Um, and I actually was on Sea Hunter the other day, um, oh, really? one of the USVs, yes, out um, over on Point Loma. And, you know, that's a medium sized USV, but it sounds like Task Force 59 in Fifth Fleet is um, 
you know, they're dealing with smaller contractor owned USVs, but it, it does, for everything I'm hearing, they're using a lot of those lessons and trying to figure out what that means for the future of, of unmanned surface vehicles. Yeah, I heard, you know, CNO mentioned that, he mentioned unmanned, he mentioned that in Seven Fleet, they are getting a, a large unmanned undersea vehicle. Yes. Deploying it this year. This is Indo PACOM. In, in, into Indo PACOM, that that, uh, that unmanned platform would have a covert mining capability. Right. That was interesting to me. And he said four more of those to come shortly. Yes. Uh, so I don't know if that's ORCA or what the program of record is, but that was interesting to me. Yes, that was news to us. That's actually something we're going to uh, look into after this, um, see what see what that means, because that was, that was the first time I'd heard that. Um, so, so yeah, we'll see. I know that um, there's a lot of there was a lot of work at RIMPAC on USVs. Yep. Um, I know that I know what CNO said was underwater, but uh, RIMPAC did a lot of work on that too on, on the USV side. So, I think we'll see that come to fruition probably more in the next year or two. See what they're learning. Yeah. Uh, last question uh, gets to resources. So there was a panel discussion with the you know chief resource or budgeteers mm -hmm. for each of the services. So Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. And uh, uh, Rear Admiral Gumbleton, that I don't know what his exact Deputy title. Deputy Assistant Secretary for Budget. I yes, think. Assistant Secretary of Budget. Um, but uh, he mentioned a, a couple things about. Uh, it was in response to a, a question from Admiral Greenert, who moderated the panel, mm -hmm. who said, "You know, we, we are seeing in the last couple of budget cycles where Congress has plussed up the the Navy budget mm -hmm. you know, in a couple of you know key areas, yes. and that that." often may not come with the tail that goes with it, right? So if you if you buy a ship or you keep a ship in commission for one more year, you pay for that. But, but to maintain it. But but to maintain it and to man it and to all those other things, that money may not come with it. Right. Um, and then you asked a you asked him a question which he couldn't really answer today, but I I'd like you to you know just repeat that question because I thought it was interesting. So the, it was about the next generation air dominance program. Yes. So the Go the ahead. NJAD program, next generation air dominance for the Navy, the Air Force has their own separate endeavor. Um, it's also called NJAD. Um, we know it's a family of systems, manned, unmanned. It's going to be a big part of the manned, unmanned teaming um, concept. But you know it's going to be centered around a manned fighter, FAXX. Um, but that's pretty much, as, that's as far as our knowledge really goes. And for the last three budget cycles, uh, so 21, 22, and 23, they have classified the research and development costs for that program. Uh -huh. So I asked the Admiral, you know, are they going to be unclassified this year? And, you know, he said, he, he kind of said they're working on it. They're yeah. looking at it um, because, you know, it's a very... It's a very classified program, but I think their ability to keep it classified long term is probably not viable. It's that we're talking about a multi-billion dollar next generation fighter program. And I mean, I think the American taxpayers want to know what the sure. Navy's spending the money on. Sure. Is there, do you have any sense or has, has DOD mentioned, um, you know, when that program might be IOC? Are we talking no, 15 we years from now? Is we don't, this? we don't know except for, I mean, the Super Hornets are going to, start going out of service I think in the 2030s and okay. I think they ideally want um, NJAD to start coming online you Before know that around that time yep. they you know want it to to succeed that so that's kind of the most insight we have into the timeline because it's classified gotcha gotcha well we're wrapping up West 2023 right now it's uh, amazing to see as soon as the luncheon keynote speaker is done and the Q&A is done. Essentially, the booths start to be packed up. and people Yeah, they start move to, very fast. People start to redeploy very, very quickly yes. here. But it's been a great show. We've had a record number of people uh, in the turnout this year, a record number of companies with booths on the floor and even out into the overflow spaces. Right. Uh, really big crowd and a lot of interest. It's been a good show. And uh, my guest for this episode of the show, wrapping up 2023 West, is uh, Mallory Shelburne from USNI News Team. Mallory, great to have you on. Thank you so much, Bill. Really All appreciate right. it.